man who talks the talk and walks the walk is the Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo. He's put gender equality at the center of his post-COVID build back plan. And he's also the author of the book, The Age of Women, Why Feminism Also Liberates Men. Prime Minister de Croo is joining me now from Brussels. And Prime Minister, welcome to the program. Um, I really was interested to have you on this program because you've written a book about feminism and you've pretty much uh, validated what the head of the WTO has said, that male allies are needed and that equality is good for men as well. How did you come to that point of view? What made you actually put this down in a book? Well, first of all, thank you for, uh, for having me to, to talk about a topic which um, I've always been very interested in since, since young age. I had a mom who was a very active feminist and, and who talked to me a lot about it. Um, but I really rediscovered it as, as a minister for development cooperation, where I saw throughout the world, uh, when there is misery throughout the world, um, it is women and girls who take the heavy, uh, the heavy burden. Uh, but I also saw that when countries develop, and when countries develop well, the more gender equality you have, the more inclusive your growth is, the better it actually works. And, and we see that on a country level, but we also see this in our own environment. If you have, uh, let's say, the council of your kid's uh, school, the parents' council, or you have uh, a sports club in, in, in which you are in management, um, if you have a decision table with only men with gray hair and blue suits, or you have a diverse decision table, I think everyone knows in these turbulent times which decision table is going to take the best decisions. The, the diverse one, of course. Um, so let me ask you, because you've made this a point, your government is evenly split, 10 women and 10 men, but the top eight roles, just two of them are filled by women. And your predecessor as prime minister, who was a woman, she lasted actually only a year. What are you doing to try to balance those scales and make it you know, more female friendly because it's more effic efficient and effective and it delivers better, as you've just said. And just to add, you also have the first trans female um, member of government in, in, your, in your government as well. Yes, we, we do. And actually, on the Belgian level, no one really talked about the fact that she was trans. Uh, everyone praised her for the fact that she's a very competent, uh, competent minister. Now, the, the key point is, if you look at it, the economic case for gender equality is clear-cut. It's extremely sound. Um, and if you look at the world today, and, and this is also the case in, in, in Belgium, what a waste of talent. I mean, we have a great education system. If you look at the end of higher education, you see that, in general, women have better scores, have better grades than, uh, than men. And then we all go into labor force. And 10 years down the road, the question is, what happens to all those, uh, all those women? Now, what we see is that there is one very decisive moment. Uh, that is when we start to have families and, and so on. And there, we do make choices, and, and we think that those are choices we, we, we take in, in, in free will. But by accident, it seems that everything which is more domestic uh, tasks ends up with, with women, and, and the men feel that they are pushed into a direction of being uh, the one providing mostly for the, for the, for the household. And, and that moment you really need to take some, uh, so, some measures. Uh, we have doubled the, um, the, the paternity leave in, uh, in, in Belgium because we've seen that if fathers take up their father role at a very young age, that actually helps in, in, in equally distributing the, um, the, uh, the tasks at, uh, at, uh, at, at home. We've also seen that in an intelligent way, if you use quota in an intelligent way, it works. And, for example, we, we, mm -hmm. we, we see it in politics. You've talked about our uh, gender parity government. We also see that in our parliament, which is the result of uh, pure uh, democracy, we have today now the, the parliament with the third highest share of female, uh, of female members of parliament. And that's a good thing. Uh, why would you not use all the talent and all the possibilities of half of your population. Women are not a minority, they're actually a majority.
Precisely, and it's great to hear you say that loud and clear. So I want to ask you then, um, there is a problem all over the world, certainly in Europe. Uh, women in the workforce have been disproportionately hit by this pandemic. Um, let's just read some of the stats. Uh, the Eurostat figures show women's unemployment in the EU has grown faster to 7.9% compared to 7.1% for men. We know, as, as you, you just said, that under COVID there's been so much domestic and gender-based violence. It's increased during the lockdowns. Um, and today you visited a centre for... Um, for, for sexual assault and, and, and domestic abuse. Again, what can you do? Because you've just said, you know, women are half the world, they, they produce so much talent and actual real life GDP, and yet they're being laid off. Well, as I said at the beginning of the interview, when there is trouble in the world, it's often women and girls who are disproportionately more affected. We see that in, in, in civil war. We've also seen this in this, uh, in, in this pandemic. It is very often women in the work, workforce who had to take uh, the very heavy uh, tasks. And when there was a balancing to be done with, with taking care of families, it was again women who had to combine, uh, combine, uh, combine everything. But interesting that you relate it to a, to, to a pandemic. I think today everyone knows the concept of a pandemic and, and what the impact of a pandemic is. And we, we know it now with, with, with COVID. But if you talk about domestic violence, if you talk about sexual violence, this has been a pandemic against women that has been going on for, for decades. I mean, the, the, the human and the economic cost of, of sexual violence and of, uh, of uh, gender-based violence is a gigantic one. And so centers like the one I visited uh, this morning are extremely important. Um, to open up the debate, but also to better take care of, uh, of victims who often are in a situation where they are not able um, to, um, to, to file complaints and, and, and to make sure that, um, that wrongdoers are being pursued. Prime Minister De Croo, thank you so much for joining us on this International Women's Day. Thank you for your perspective. 